When you think of a crossover vehicle, you probably think of one of these. This is a Nissan Qashqai. It kind of invented the genre of crossovers that's on every street in the UK nowadays. They've sold over three million of the damn things. But I'm not here to review this. I'm here to review this. This is the Nissan Aria, the ground up all new electric hope for Nissan. That's kind of the electric brother of that. It's a bit longer than that, 19 centimetres longer and longer in the wheelbase than that. I have reviewed this car as a walk around before, but I've never driven it until today. So in this episode, we're going to be road driving and having a good look at the Aria. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to the Lake Road Show. I've been excited to drive the Aria ever since I did the walk around because I think it had a unique look to it, but also I know that Nissan make decent electric cars. They're reliable, they just sort of quietly get on with the job, but they have sort of got left behind in a world where all the other manufacturers were trying to catch up um, and the Leaf has just carried on selling strongly, but they needed a crossover for the range and that's where this fits in. This takes the fight to the Volkswagen ID4, things like the perhaps the Kia EV6, the BMW iX3, Ford Mustang Mach-E, those kinds of things. Now it says prototype vehicle on the side of this. This is one of the last of the pre-prods before it goes into mass production mode, I guess. So it's near as damn it. There could be a few little materials that are not quite mass production ready that's what usually manufacturers say to me um, but it's almost as you will be able to buy it this is two-wheel drive this car and this is in mid-spec trim evolve trim you've got enhance evolve and then you've got e-force performance first thing i can tell you about the aria um, and this particular car is in the Evolve spec, which is mid-ranking, front-wheel drive. It's actually a firmer, stiffer car than I was expecting. So kind of more like, the, I would say, more like the Tesla Y. Do you know what? This is really quiet. As you drive more EVs, I know people say, well, all EVs are quiet. Yeah, but you still get to hear things and feel things. So... The Aria looks really similar to how I saw it in the studio in the previous video. And I know I showed it next to the Qashqai. It is still, uh, dimensionally at least, it is uh, shorter than the Tesla Y and the Mach-E. But interestingly, higher than the Tesla Y, the Mach-E, the ID4 and the ENIAC, higher and higher ground clearance than all of those, about the same as the ENIAC, but the narrowest in segment, but it's not noticeable and the turning circles akin to the Ford Mach-E. Just thought you might want to know that. You come around to the front, you've got this intelligent shield kind of uh, setup which conceals all the, the LiDAR, radar, gubbins. Now, I remember that being an illuminating badge and so many manufacturers, they removed the illuminated badge for legislation reasons, but I think it's luminous, I think it's lumin, lumin, luminous, fluorescent, like glow in the dark, but I don't think it does. I've tried to unlock it and lock it. I'm pretty sure it, it is just a regular badge. You can see these patterns have come through here, which is the uh, Kamiko traditional wood carving patterns. Yeah, that's what that's inspired by. Now you'll rem remember that this the sort of really shallow headlights with almost Bugatti Chiron style segments inside. That's all very cool. There is no frunk. There's no storage under there on the Aria. Nissan's reason for that is because they've put all the HVAC system, all the climate control, the heating and stuff, all those, that hardware is now in there. Because it's a ground up EV, you've got that lovely flat floor here and I do enjoy the space. I, I, I think the layout of the cabin is, 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 is well judged, it's, it's tasteful. Depending on which battery you go for, the 63 kilowatt hour or the 87, the weight of the Aria varies between about 1800 and 2200 kilos and obviously 
the range differs depending on which battery you go for. Between about coming up, they think for 250 miles up to about 315, 320, so both decent mileage capabilities. This car happens to have the smaller battery. I'm not doing a range test today because I don't have long enough in the car and I tend not to do like a, a, a really minute detail analysis of that. I get used to the feel of it and I have a look at the quality of the car. It's a big slab back on the Aria. So it's quite a sort of um, stocky look about it, but yet it, weirdly it's sort of higher but narrower than all the other the cars. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, that's the conventional way to open the boot. And they all come with a motorized boot, I believe. But this is, this is technology that I don't massively care about. But with my consumer head on, I must show you this. I believe Ari has come as standard with this. So you can do your foot wipe. Hang on, it won't do it now that it's on sodding camera. Come on, it did it. And this is why I don't give a flying shit about technology like this, because it's not hard to just open a boot, is it? Now, left and right hand drive car boot space changes ever so slightly. I don't know why, it's a really odd quirk. So, 468 litres on the left hand drive Aria boot, 466, so it loses two litres in the boot space. It does have these really interesting kind of false floor elements, which you can lift, there's two of them there, look, which I like, because you can hinge one bit up or both bits up, or you can just take them both out. For four wheel drive, if you order the E-Force, which sounds like a bad Marvel character, E-Force boot, 408 for right hand drive, 415 for left hand drive. So having a, a motor at the back for four wheel drive does, um, damage your space ever so slightly. I really like the boot space here. I would definitely get rid of that instantly because I'm pretty sure that back window is tinted for security. That is a good size boot. Now I'm looking at these screens. Nissan's made a point, and I think it's a tasteful point, of not having a tablet kind of like hooked onto the dashboard looking disjointed. It's, it's sort of amalgamated. It steps in a little here, but it the point is it's supposed to be the same so it's not a huge screen i think it's 12 inch but it's it's big enough it's as big as i would want it to be graphics wise what's kind of weird about the aria is it almost looks slightly soft focus i don't know whether it's my eyes though in terms of the in terms of the basic layout then you've got a speedometer here on the right hand dial on the left dial here, you've got your use of power. So basic controls, you've got these lovely um, haptic feedback climate controls along here with a, an on and an off button there for the infotainment and an on and off button for the car just here. These disappear when you aren't using them, when you don't see them, they, they disappear into the dash when you turn the car off. This is a sort of faux wood plinth. Now, while I would normally like a faux wood plinth, and I do love it in the, when I first saw this car in the kind of, prototype form, the concept form. It looked more tasteful than this. This looks very plasticky when you're less than two feet away. And that's what I would say, sort of from the waist down, it does feel a lot more plasticky than I would have liked. Like the Andon, I think they're called Andon, the sort of uh, paper lantern inspired patterns and things down there. That looks actually quite cheap from here, which is a shame. Steering wheel's kind of perforated leather. It's not quite circular, it's sort of flat bottomed here. So just gonna do a little naught to 60 sprint. I'm gonna start here ever so slightly. Three, two, one. This is, uh, actually, let's put it in sport mode. There's three modes. Three, two, one, zero to 60. Now this will be seven and a half seconds. So it's not gonna set the world on fire. There we go just in time before the corner. So yeah, three drive modes with a haptic button down there. Depending on which car you choose, it'll be either 7.6, 7.5, 5.7, or 5.1 seconds, zero to 60, 100 kilometers an hour. This is actually surprisingly um, taut, I would say. 
No, I, I was reading in the little kind of uh, seminar that they've definitely strengthened, they made an effort to strengthen the shell of this car because it sits higher. They wanted to make sure it had enough kind of um, torsional rigidity, especially over the back of the hatch area. Remember, this car, the Aria, according to Nissan at least, distills the, the DNA and the know-how of the Leaf, the Qashqai, and the GTR, the R35. So there's, the specs are Advance, Evolve, and E-Force. This is Evolve. You get things like the Bose 10-speaker audio system as standard. You also get this. You can option this with the, which is the panoramic glass roof, which does open. I like an opening roof. Now, in terms of charging the Aria, this is the first Nissan where they have stopped adopting the Chademo socket system. This is now combined charging system, rapid charge only, which is uh, CCS. And it will CCS charge up to 130 kilowatts. But what Nissan did point out is they said it, it has a very linear pattern of being able to, to rapid charge. Whereas some cars claim to charge rapid charge quicker, they, they can charge higher, but for shorter amounts of time. So overall, what they're trying to say is it's tortoise and hare. One thing you do get, which is an option on the entry level, but standard on this so that with a bigger battery, uh, this spec, the mid-ranking spec, is a 22 kilowatt AC onboard charging system. And that's helpful because that can charge the car near as damn it from zero to full in four hours. So you don't necessarily need to seek rapid charger, uh, public charger, you could just use that. So there's four flavors of Aria and it starts with the Advance, 63 kilowatt hour Advance, 223 mile range, 217 PS, seven and a half seconds to 60, 41,000 pounds. Then it goes up to the Advance with the Sky Pack, which is basically a panoramic roof. And that adds, oh, I don't know, about 500 quid. And then you go to the um, Evolve, which is the, this trim level, and it has a bigger battery, 87 kilowatt hour usable uh, battery. That is 7.6 seconds to 62, so basically the same, 242 PS, 51 grand. Then you go E-Force, which is four wheel drive, twin motor. And that only comes with the bigger battery pack, the 87 kilowatt hour, 285 mile range rather than 310 mile range of the, uh, the bigger battery car, um, two-wheel drive, 306 PS, 53,700 quid. And then the ultimate force, which is the top of the range, 5.1 seconds to 62, 394 PS, bad boy, is 58 and a half grand, that is, yeah. So that's firmly in the sort of the lion's den of the Mackie GT, that sort of thing. The Aria is only made in Japan, although this platform, which is the uh, collaboration between Mitsubishi and Renault, the Alliance kind of fresh platform, they are gonna make a version, a different version of this car, you know, like a, probably a smaller version, in Sunderland. And they do make battery packs and things at their Gigafactory in Sunderland already, and their plan is for it to be a carbon neutral setup that does all of that. Nissan is quite progressive actually with all of that and it's a massive employer in the UK so I always think that's worth considering. Now the brakes, whereas VW go for drum brakes on the back and they've explained that that's because with regen and everything maybe you don't need to, Nissan have almost gone the other way. They've gone for twin piston um, calipers on the back, discs all round. And that's because they say it requires it, especially when you start to up the performance and the power of the Aria. Oh, here's the thing, look. When you've got the car on, this center console doesn't seem to move. So I've got to turn it off and listen to the uh, foreign market well-known soap opera. But when it's off, look, you can move it to and fro. It's gotta be the only car I can think of where the gear selector can be moved. So let's just have it there for the time being. Yeah. 
Now, I really like it, you know, I love the very Japanese approach. The whole car is very Japanese, and by that I mean not just it's made in Japan, but it also has a very distinctive Japanese style with influences that they've used from um, traditional art and, and so forth. It sounds corny, but a lot of it works well. You've still got the copper inserts inside. There's this faux wood kind of plinth, and it's a shallow dash, and it's very open because it's flat floor, all new architecture. I don't know if you remember Nissan talking about your sort of like, when you're charging, you can use it as a home office type thing. Well, if I press this, there, you've got a sort of home off, apparently, some sort of home office organizer slash stand, which you can use presumably when you're sat in the car charging up. And we've got man-made fibers, bit of Alcantara here. And the, this mid-ranking car has perforated Alcantara seats that are ventilated. In here, wireless car charging. I've noticed there's like little sort of petals coming off blossom emblems everywhere, which is okay, but in there it does feel a bit plasticky. So back of the Aria. And this is an area of EVs which is often, I think, looks impressive on camera but actually is quite cramped and that's because obviously the batteries live in the floor, which means the floor sits, you know, is a big thick chunk here. And this has got quite a high roof. Not too high, but just absolutely fine actually. There's some decent, I think quite thoughtful cutouts in the headrests. And that's good for kids because they can see through as well. There's an extra feeling of space. Five seat only. And I think, has it got Isofix in the middle? No, Isofix either side and on the passenger side. On the console that moves to and fro, you've got your heated rear seats here, and you've got a couple of USBs, a B and a C. And that flat tunnel here, or lack of tunnel, is great. So that person in the middle there gets actually, you know, half decent space. I like that. And these seats have got distinct cutouts here for extra knee space. Armrest. Yes, armrest, two cup holders, bravo. If you hear people muttering the, 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 the serial number PZ1A, yeah, PZ1A, that is the internal code for the Aria, PZ1A. Well, the PZ1A has a towing capacity, if you want it to, of 750 kilos braked for the two-wheel drive and 1,500 kilos braked for the all-wheel drive models, which is important if you like caravans or say a motorcycle trailer or something like that. This CMF-EV all-new platform that the Aria rides on is a collaboration with Mitsubishi and the alliance that they have with Renault. In fact, a shorter version of this is under the new Megane, electric Megane, which I haven't yet driven. But uh, I, uh, having driven it now for an hour, I actually think it's it's a fine chassis. I really like the suspension, 50-50 weight distribution. It feels, it does feel a lot more sporty than I was expecting. It's kind of caught me out. And this is the two-wheel drive version and not the sort of high intensity performance version. So I am starting to feel like this is, Nissan saying that this is a distillation of a bit of a, a GTR, um, DNA, a bit of uh, Qashqai DNA, and a bit of Leaf DNA. Maybe that isn't so much marketing waffle as actual fact. This car is riding on the 20-inch wheels, so theoretically it will be a firmer, maybe slightly crashier ride than with the 19-inch wheels. They kind of look the same aesthetically, I can't tell much of a difference. They got their aero pattern with the plastic inserts. The steering's really good as well, and quite a lack of body roll. It's, it's hanging on in there. You know, I'm kind of driving like an absolute stroker on the school run late simulation, and uh, I'm having to, I have to say, it's really impressive. I'm getting a bit of wobble from the center console. I've got it all the way forward. <laughs> I haven't even put it in sport mode. Let's put it in sport mode now. And uh, I'm going to go for e-pedal. Now there is a bit of regen without the e-pedal, but it's not quite as aggressive. 
The Aria wades into what is a really busy, competitive, crowded segment in the EV world. What with your Tesla Ys and your ID4s and your ENIACs, it's busy. So if you've watched this and you're thinking of buying a car like this, what I would say is, don't just take my word for it. Always go and try these cars for yourself as well, because they might be right for you. The Aria then. I think this is a really good all-round car. There's a lot to like. I think the design is distinctive. I enjoy the inside. I think the one thing about the Aria that I feel like hasn't quite met the mark for me is although I love the interior design, there's a lot of cheaper materials which irritates me slightly. However, space, practicality, and the size of the car, EVs, a lot of EV SUVs have got too big. This is a good size. This is fit for purpose. I like this. I hope you've enjoyed this late break show review of the Aria. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much. If you support this channel through Patreon, you've probably already seen videos like this earlier than, than the others. Thank you very much for doing that. I'll put a link for Patreon below. Cheers.